At the Bank of Hardington, we understand the importance of owning your own home. Whether you are buying, building, or refinancing, our real estate loan officers are here to help you through the mortgage loan process. Stop in at Bank of Hardington today to get pre-qualified or go to our website at www.bankofhardington.com to complete an application. Our real estate loan officers, Kristen Denninger and Dana Rosner, are ready to work with you in discovering the best home loan to meet your needs. Hi, I'm Eric Amos, Egg Loan Officer at the Bank of Hardington and a Northeast Nebraska Beef Producer. At the Bank of Hardington, we strive to build relationships based on trust and service that last generations. We work with our clients to develop financial plans that help them meet their goals. We know that for our farmers, it is much more than a job, it's a way of life. How do we know? Because we are farmers and we are living it too.
athletes have a great and healthy season this year. Your hard work and dedication proves that you're in it for the long haul. Mark, his family, and the truck drivers at Mark Bruning Trucking enjoy being able to follow the sports season, whether they're at home or on the road. Mobile banking from Security Bank. Mobile banking offers you the ultimate in on-demand service, allowing access to your account information right from your mobile phone. Pay your bills, pay back a friend, and now even deposit a check, all with just a tap of a finger. Now that's my kind of bank. Check us out online at mysecbank.com. Security Bank, member FDIC. When it comes to all your tax planning, tax preparation, bookkeeping, and payroll needs, Milbra Seiler Bookkeeping and Tax Service has been the place to go. They've been providing high quality, professional tax and bookkeeping services to the surrounding area for over 30 years. In addition to these services, Milbra Seiler also offers an array of financial services. Stop in today at 106 West Main in Hardington to see what Milbra Seiler has to offer. Call Northeast Grinding for custom hay and high moisture corn grinding. We have multiple grapple grinding units and have an array of screen sizes with economical rates. Give Patrick a call for all your grinding needs at 402-640-6160. Call Northeast Pipe and Panel, a local company for all your fencing needs. They make four, five, six, and seven bar by 20 foot continuous fence panels and 10 foot and 12 foot portable corral panels. The pipe and panels are all American made right here in Hardington. Call Rob or Pam Howell at 402-254-9585 or 877-207-1048. Our shop is located in Hardington Industrial Park. Reps is Hardington's only 24-hour fitness center and they challenge you to get fit. Stop by and check out the fitness equipment and our complete array of weight machines. Reps offers daily group fitness classes. Call 402-254-2474 or visit us at www.repsfitness.com. Kaiser Ag and Irrigation is your local Zomatic dealer. Call us today for all of your pivot servicing, parts, and purchasing at 402-254-9557. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Scott Lark alongside Bo Benson bringing you tonight's broadcast from Hardington here. Cedar Catholic playing Crofton as they come into town 3-2 and two on the year. Cedar Catholic unbeaten 5-0. and oh. And we're just about set for kickoff here. We'll go over some stats, some info. First, we're going to have the National Anthem and a Prayer coming up. Good evening, and welcome to the Cedar Catholic football game. I am Megan Hymas, and a member of the campus ministry team, and I will be leading you in a prayer tonight. So let us pray together. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Dear Father, may we compete with your heart shining through ours. May we push ourselves to be what you tell us we can be. May we have kindness in our hearts, mindfulness in our souls, and endurance to finish. Keep us and our competitors safe from harm, and let our actions be a testament to your glory. Bless our parents for all the sacrifices they do that we may achieve our goals. We ask for this in your name. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Thank you. Now I have one of our colors presented by our local DFW host, 5283, and the Cedar Catholic Cap Band under the direction of Irving Nelson will do the national anthem.
And good evening, Scott Ark alongside Bo Benson bringing you Cedar Catholic Trojan football. Cedar Catholic 5-0 and on the year, bringing in Crofton Warriors, and always a tough matchup. And that one is going to be home this year as Crofton comes into town 3-2 and two on the year, ranked number 14th in power points. Cedar Catholic, they're falling in the polls the past couple weeks, but they are still coming ranked number 5 in power points in Class C2. Bo, going to have a tough one tonight, a little bit of rain here. It's going to be a tough contest. It is definitely going to be a tough contest. Crofton has had... Has two losses on the year, uh, Aquinas Catholic and Oakland Craig, both top 10 ranked teams, and they've both been pretty close games. So the Trojans sure got a tough task ahead of them tonight. I have not seen Crofton play. Uh, I do have a friend of mine, obviously, we announced with on another broadcast station. He said, look out, Crofton's a sleeper this year. They've been, past couple years, had a little bit of a letdown, if you will in their uh, record and he said that will be a mistake if you do not pay attention to this team so they're coming in tonight the war for the oar as we call it back on for this traditional game here in hardington just about set for kickoff all the kicking duties tonight going to go through and it's going to be the same one number four blake arns doing the kicking duties and everybody's amped up getting rained on here all set to go from russ Oakstein field Got two individuals back at the numbers called out here. Brown and white for Crofton, and they'll be set to receive this kickoff from Arns. Receiving it about the 18, straightforward running, good blocking up front. Still on his feet, shedding defenders, and it'll be brought down at the midfield. I didn't get a number, it looks like number 14 is gonna be returning that one. Austin Tramp, the senior, for a 32-yard return, and great field position for Crofton. Yes, that was a great return by Austin Tramp, he kind of found a little seam and just squeezed through there, and defenders couldn't quite grasp him, and away he went. Cedar Catholic defense on the field first, leading the Trojans this year has been Kirby Hochstein. He is leading all tacklers with around 10 to 12 a game, and he will be in that linebacker position. Looks like he's going to blitz coming straight up the middle. Cedar Catholic, they will blitz on first down, looking to pass. Kirby comes straight up the middle and does get away. Lyon's going to overthrow everyone there. Great pursuit up the middle there by Hochstein, and that put the quarterback, number 12, Zach Weber, on his back. The 235-pounder will bring up second down. Yeah, just overshot his receiver. Had a little happy feet. Had four, four receivers run down the field, and it was pretty well covered by the Trojans. Second down and 10 for Crofton here. Ball right at about the midfield stripe. Going right to left. Wind a little bit at their back. And again, light rain falling here as we start this contest. Tight wing tee formation, handoff, straightforward running. Good containment there. We'll get a gain of about one. We'll bring up third and long. Not, no, there was nowhere to go for that running back. Just a huge host of Trojans to stop him. Every year, this seems to be the matchup that just, it's a tough one no matter what the record is. And I was stopped all week this week. And folks on the street, they know they're playing Crofton. A big shout out to Dan Cottle, along with Doris. Haven't talked to Doris in a while. Hope you're doing well. And uh, we know you're tuning in for tonight's broadcast. Third down and nine, just underway with a minute in the first quarter here. Tight formation with an eye formation also for Crofton. No wide receivers. Man coming motion to the near side. Hand off the second man through. Good contact. Cross first down yardage still on his feet. And it's going to be wrestled down at about the 22-yard line, making the tackle for Cedar Catholic. Kirby Hochstein was in on the tackle, along with Hunter Taney, and that'll move the chains. Yeah, the running back, he's just got choppy feet, and he just kept him moving and pumping, and away he went. That's a classic Coach Tom Allen formation there. Bunch 11 guys, as tight as you can get them. As long as you got good blocking up front, you can't tell who has the ball. No, it's like putting them in a phone booth and fighting. Phone booth formation again here, tight wing T formation. Straightforward, same formation, same running, and a gain of five. Running the ball that time for Crofton was number five. 
And that's going to be the running back, Jimmy Allen. I'm pretty sure that's going to be father-son there from, from head coach to Jimmy. I'm not sure. Someone will correct me if I'm wrong. 180-pound junior, going to gain five, bring up second down and five. Again, three and two on the year for Crofton, five and oh. Cedar Catholic is one of only five schools left in Class C2 with an undefeated record. And we'll go over that ranking system here throughout the night and talk a little bit about power points. Man in motion is Tramp, now working his way to the far side. Tramp straight forward running. And good backside pursuit. It's going to be stopped short of the first down until we can break this kind of running attack. And they get good blocking up front. They're going to do this all night long. One of the names is going to jump out. We're going to see there Paxton Bartles. That's the son of Blake Bartles. He's going to be doing a lot of blocking up front for Crofton. They do have a little bit of a size advantage. You know, 275, 240, 240. I think they got a weight advantage up front. Oh, definitely. Third down and a long two here. 9-19 to go in the first quarter. Weber under center. Handoff is to Allen. Straight forward. And he's going to get a gain of uh, bot three. And it will move the chains. What they're doing here is they're just doing a little toss. And the running back reads if there's a hole. Go in it. If they're not, he's kicking it to the outside, and that's what he did on the last play before this. And this time there was a hole in the middle. I find this formation boring. It is boring, but it is effective, and that's what they're looking at. I think the coach who perfected this, at least for me, is Darren Suckstorf. He had Lutheran High Northeast Eagles. They did this year after year. Kid's name was Shaka Taylor, and the guy would have like 250 yards rushing every game. And they just won. It was so boring to watch. So no passing here in this formation. Looks like it's going to be all running with Allen. Hand off to Weber. This time Allen gets a call. Straight forward running off to that left side. And it will be another first down. There's going to have to be some adjustments made up front for Cedar Catholic. Yes, definitely. We're going to have to be showing some different things. Shifting down or sending a blitzing linebacker. But if you blitz wrong, then you're in big trouble. And you're going to give up a really big play. First and goal. Ball at... It's going to be right at the 10, so first and goal for Crofton in the first quarter here. Weber, quarterback keeper, straight four, is going to get a gain of five. I want to thank tonight's feature sponsor, the Bank of Hardington. They are tonight's feature sponsor. We really want to shout out to all of our sponsors. and We'll get as many of those some highlight time here and talk about it as the game goes on, but we could not bring this broadcast to you without their help. Straightforward running, Bo. Nothing yeah. fancy about this. Downhill. Three yards in a cloud of dust. Yeah, yeah. Everybody should, plenty of dust, but everybody should be happy getting a little sprinkle. Here. Yes, definitely. It has been dry. Weber's going to be under center. A man in motion right there. That is Allen. And, oh, high pitch, and it's going to be a blitz off the corner. Cedar Catholic makes a nice stop. That's Miles Taney. He was coming on a corner blitz. Stop that one. It'll bring up third down. Let's see how Crofton comes back with that. You show that blitz once, and they're going to dial something up to try to come from a different angle to really affect that blitz happening. Third and goal. Ball at the six-yard line, 740 to go here in the first quarter play. Weber under center. Allen is running back on the near side. He's been getting the call the last couple of carries. I have no idea who has. I think Weber kept this one. I think it's a quarterback keeper, but it will be fourth and goal. Ball at about the one-yard line. No, looks like I'm the going four-yard line. Four-yard line, it looks like, over there. Or the three. It's right on the three-yard line. It's right on the for the extra point. Pretty important play here early on. Great crowd on hand, even given the conditions. Some umbrellas down here. Big Reds chanting defense. Fourth and goal at the three. Weber, the quarterback, is under center. Allen, a man in motion. It should be should be man in motion here. It's going to get a penalty. See what the call. They either got us jumping. And it is. Cedar Catholic jumped off sides. I was hoping that one of their guys jumped. As it is half the distance to the goal, will be fourth and goal from the one and a half. That would have been a big one there, back about yes, five yards. Yes, that would be beneficial. Yeah, I can hear Joe Hish in the next booth over going, wait a minute. <laughs> yeah, I was hopeful there too, Joe. Fourth and goal from the one and a half for Crofton here. 
Straightforward running sneak. Weber, and he's got it. There's the signal. Touchdown, Crofton. They strike first. Zach Weber, the 235-pound senior quarterback. That's like Ben Roethlisberger. That size. is a pretty big, big quarterback for C2. Uh, that was a good play for them. That's yeah. You need a yard and a half, and he looks like a pretty tall kid too. So he can just about fall forward and score. I think that was eight running plays and one pass play for Crofton on that offensive series. Now an extra point up, and this one's going to be blocked. Really important play there. Cedar Catholic blocks the extra point. Crofton they strike first, six to no, six to zero. They're on top of Cedar Catholic. At the Bank of Hardington, we understand the importance of owning your own home. Whether you are buying, building, or refinancing, our real estate loan officers are here to help you through the mortgage loan process. Stop in at Bank of Hardington today to get pre-qualified or go to our website at www.bankofhardington.com to complete an application. Our real estate loan officers, Kristen Denninger and Dana Rosner, are ready to work with you in discovering the best home loan to meet your needs. Scott Ark alongside Bo Benson bringing you first quarter action here. Cedar Catholic trail six to nothing as Crofton puts on an impressive drive. Eight running plays, one pass play, and they strike first. Yeah, we got heavy doses of run there. I didn't like that at all. Zach Weber, the quarterback, 235, a senior. He just looks real impressive. Crofton, as advertised, playing pretty solid here. As it is, Cedar Catholic now is going to get the ball. It's going to be a short kick, fielded by Charlie Schrader on the run at the 20. And a great tackle. Hold on to the ball, Charlie. Wow, as he is upended at the 26. Great tackling there by Crofton. Very good gang tackling. They were flying to the ball, and none of them let up or anything, and they all... We got some uh, aggression going on here in this rivalry game. This one just... We've seen it before. They Each team can come in, and the rankings just don't matter. I think we just too, live too close to some of these kids. As it is, Cedar Catholic, two wide receivers to the near. I formation... And a handoff is to Easton Becker across that left side. Tripped up, gain of two. Becker's averaging 151 yards per contest. And he has been the workhorse for Cedar Catholic this year. Coming out is Kirby. Checking in for Cedar Catholic is Noah Arns, the senior. And he'll bring the play in from Coach Chad Cotto. Second down and eight. As now Cedar Catholic spreads the field again. Charlie comes to the near side along with... I just can't see the number. Pistol formation, man in motion. His arms coming from the far side to the near. And he hits. It bumps into the wide receiver. The ball is on the ground. I don't know who has this. I think Easton Becker happened to pick that up, and he lost a yard on it, but at least we retained position, possession there. So Arns was coming in. Look, like he's coming in motion. It, it almost looked like it could be a direct snap straight to Arns, which is a dangerous play. That Everything's got to line up perfect yeah. on those. As it is third down and eight, Cedar Catholic sputtering a little bit here. Now a late substitution coming in. Three wide receivers here to the near side for Cedar Catholic. One to the far, four wide outs total. As now Tate scrambling around. He's got a man over the center, and it's going to be Miles wide open at the 50, and it's going to be brought down at about the 46, 45-yard line, rather 47 on the Crofton side of the 50. So a nice first down play. Yeah, Miles just came across there. What Chet, Coach Cotto's doing here is uh, he's spreading them all out. Since we don't have the size advantage, it's get our players out one-on-one -on -one coverage and just see what happens. It looks like they're playing a zone defense, so Miles found a little little hole out there in the middle, and Tate made a good toss to him. First down and 10. Becker is the deep back. Kirby Hochstein, the fullback. Pitch to Becker coming up straight into the near side, trying to get outside, and is going to be brought down. We'll give him a gain of about a half a yard. And again, not trying to run into the teeth of that defense, but rather get around to the outside. And this might set you up good for later, making those big linemen run sideline to sideline. It's going to wear them out a little bit quicker. I don't know if you can get the true appreciation on TV seeing this, but 
They're big. They're they really, are really big. white, good sized gentlemen. Four man front for Crofton. Fake the handoff. Looking. He's got two men open down over there. It's going to be a nice catch at the 35 and a good tackle there as Crofton secures up. That's number 30, Carter Arns, but not before a first down play. And that'll move the chains. A little play action pass. Get those linebackers bit in deep. And that's what happens when you get Easton Becker, a true runner back there. And they got to respect him so it opens up that those passing avenues. Checking for Cedar Catholic now, number 35, James Christensen is on the other side of that pistol formation. Easton Becker's on the near side. And we'll see if Coach Cotto keeps the pass play going. Option play and Tate decides to keep it. Yeah, he's going to get some good yardage there. Really kind of made something out of nothing. We'll bring up second down. They're going to call it second and uh, eight, I believe. Yeah, we haven't seen a lot of play action, continual pass plays no. from Cedar Catholic this year. It's been... You're going to have to deal with Becker. Yep. But Crofton's saying you've got to deal with our linemen. So. Yeah, that's – they're kind of battling up the run right now. A little chess match going on here as – And that's what that tonight probably will be. Carter Arns split out to the far side. It's Kirby and Easton lined up there, and the handoff is to Easton. The second man through. Scott, first down. Can be right at that first down. They're going to be marked just a little bit short, it looks like. That's a good play to have, though, a little third down and one. That gives you a lot of options there. Typical Easton Becker, make contact at the line of scrimmage and get another six or seven yards. I think he beat his lineman through on that pole, too, so might have been a good thing there, too. So it's last week. Cedar kind of got going first quarter, but then the second quarter, they really took off. So this one here is a little different contest. Little There's first down yardage as Tate does, a quarterback keeper. This one's setting up to just be a, a long... We're almost through the first quarter and only one possession each. Yes. And that's, I think, Crofton's game plan. You keep it out of the hands of the other team. That's your best defense is, the, is a good offense, and that's what they did. Cedar Catholic bench has several more players on it than Crofton does, so numbers advantage, but the size is going to go to the visitors tonight. Double running back formation, so double pistol there for Cedar Catholic. One wide out to each side. As Tate option, and he gives it to the first man. Nope, quarterback keeper coming to the near side. Breaks the tackle. Still on his feet across the five. Dives into the end zone. Touchdown, Cedar Catholic. We got a flag. Tate there, Tate like. celebrating there. I think he's going to get unsportsmanlike, but that'll be after the play. As you can't throw the ball up, but we'll see what the official call on the field is. He was pretty energized that he got in on that one. Yeah, that was that was a good play. I thought he'd given that, play, that ball, and he... He left that mesh in there a real long time and pulled it, and the way he went. If that is the call, you cannot, you can't do any of that kind of stuff in high school, and you sure don't want to do it when it's an important game. But yeah, and that is it'll be an unsportsmanlike. Just a, ah, it could have been one of those incidentals. Excited, just yeah, it happens. It happens. It's one of those if stuff like that rubs off onto your own players, and you get all excited and gets the guys going. It, it might be worth it a little bit, but whatever. Put in the end zone, he did. Mm -hmm. Touchdown is good on a nice scram scramble run there by Taney from, looks like that was about 17 yards out. So a better mix of pass and run versus Croft was just basically almost all run. But what this does here is this pushes, now the rain is really starting to come down if you can't oh, see it on yeah. the camera. Good rainfall coming down. And it looks like on radar, it's going to continue for a little bit here. But At least now, it's not a heavy rain, just kind of a light you know, drizzle we got happening here. I think the last time it rained like this was about March, so... <laughs> it seems like it. <laughs> I just can't. As it is, this one's going to be a long extra point. This one's going to be a uh, 35-yard. 25-yard, it looks. Well, yeah, 35, 30, yep. 35 here for Arns. Snap. Kicks up. It's got to go. It's got to go. Oh, it landed on the end line. It is no good. Just short. That's important. 2.27 to go in the first quarter. It's all tied up at 6. Hi, I'm Eric Amos, Egg Loan Officer at the Bank of Hardington and a Northeast Nebraska beef producer. At the Bank of Hardington, we strive to build relationships based on trust and service that last generations. We work with our clients to develop financial plans that help them meet their goals. We know that for our farmers, it is much more than a job, it's a way of life. 
How do we know? Because we are farmers and we are living it too. Cedar Catholic goes 73 yards, and Tate Taney caps it off with a 17-yard quarterback scramble that led to a penalty after the play and then pushed that extra point back. And it was just about a yard or two too far for Ernst to connect on. 6-6 six, six your score. Scott Ark alongside Bo Benson, and tonight we got Corey Pearson taking care of the technical duties in here. And, man, did we need him. We we like to come on with a little bit more time here before kickoff, and, and uh, well, Technical detail that Corey was able to fix, no problem, and we're up and running. Short pooch kick, it's gonna be high, still raining here. This one's gonna be fielded on the run at the 25, across the 30, and it's gonna be brought down right about the 34 yard line, and that's where Crofton's gonna take over. The key to this contest early on is gonna be, in my opinion, you gotta stop the run. Yes, we're, we gotta shut down that run game and make them turn it over, or make them pass. They try to pass play right off the bat, and the quarterback got some pressure, and he threw it deep, and we had good coverage. So they need to rely on their size up front to really just pound it all night in order to win this game. Usually I'm sitting here talking about the running back and making me nervous, but tonight it's a quarterback Weber. I just don't like he's 235 and that mobile. Very impressive. Long cadence here by Weber. Hand off the second man through. Good blocking and a good tackle there. Making a stop for Cedar Catholic, number 61. That is Owen Deniger, player of the game down in David City a couple weeks ago. However, a gain of five, second and five coming up. I think they're doing a long count just to kind of get our guys relaxed. They got to be sitting on their heels. And then when they do go, they're and blown back right off the bat. Another way of keeping the ball out of our hands, drag yep. this out. Five-man front for Cedar Catholic. Everybody's tight to the contest. There it is, looking, scrambling up front, and he's going to be brought down a gain of two. Third down coming up. Again, making the tackle for Cedar Catholic is Owen Deniger. The running backs, we've seen this in the, the – Ponka does it as well. The running back is so slow, and their coach that way, slow down, just wait for it to develop, wait, yep, wait, wait. Take your time, pick that hole. Third down and four here for Crofton. Hand off to the second man through, and he's going to be stopped. Great defensive stop there by Cedar Beautiful Catholic. Play. Kirby Holstein makes the stop along with, who's the first man in there? He just got up off the ground. 28. 28. Got to give credit to him. 24, I think. 24, who we got? That's going to be Owen Hymas. Good. He might have been the first play. man in there. So That's there a big stop on that third down there. Third and short like that. So fourth down and about three ball at the 42-yard line. I don't think this is four down territory. Too dangerous in a, and Crofton has some great weapons. There's no point in taking a risk right here. So back deep for Cedar Catholic is Miles. He's only been back a few times this year. And a soccer rugby kick to the far side and a good kick. Miles is going to feed it at the bot, the 22, trying to go up the far side. And a big hit, and the flag comes in late. And another flag is going to come in. So there's going to be multiple fouls. This one, first one's going to be on Noah Arns. There's one back uh, running into the punter, and I believe that was on Hunter Taney oh. back at the start. This this whole thing could all offset here. Depends on what the, the middle flag is. So two of them are on Cedar, and the middle one here is, we'll see what that one's for. Noah, I thought it was a clean block, but he's going to be called for a blindside block or... A clipping. I don't know what the middle flag is all about. With the running into the kicker, that's a that's a first down. I believe. So. I think even if it's just running in, that's five yards. Yep. That'll give them the first down. So if this one here goes against Crofton, hopefully this will be offsetting and we'll do it again. Otherwise, this could be a big swing here for Crofton. A lot of talking going on. They're really the, deliberating on yeah, what happened. With two of them against Cedar, and one I'm assuming is going to be against Crofton, probably a block in the back, but we'll see. And now Coach Cotto is going to get an explanation too. Okay, personal foul. So that, no, that's running into the kicker. Yep. 
a personal foul. That's a blindside block against Cedar. And in a personal foul, blindside, another one. So all three of those, all three of them are personal fouls against Cedar Catholic. They'll all be accepted, which... No, they're just accepting running into the kicker. So then they're going to get just a 15-yard penalty and get automatic first down. Yeah, basically it's a turnover is what it's going to equate to. Yeah, that's a that's a big big play. You hate having one personal foul. Yeah, three of them. But and if you didn't have the running in the kicker, it's just we still get the ball. It just move back 15 yards. You can't have that. The blindside blocks. That's a very questionable. Sometimes they are, yes, but they. But I wonder if the refs know how this game sometimes turns out, so they're trying to keep it in check. I like when a kid's given that much energy and given, but basically it equates to a turnover. And now the ball moves, advances 15 yards, so it's on the Cedar Catholic side of the 50 at about the 43-yard line, first down and 10. This will be the last play of the first quarter as Allen running straight forward, tripped up, and he's going to be at a gain of about seven. And the clock now rolling under 10 seconds. This will be the end of the first quarter. And that will, so this is as advertised, this game is going to be a tight one here if the first quarter is anything to show what's coming up ahead. At the end of one, your score all tied up at six. We'll be back in one minute. Hi, I'm Brett Wiedenfeld, Chief Financial Officer and Ag Lender at the Bank of Hardington. And I'm also a Northeast Nebraska pork producer. At the Bank of Hardington, we have the tools and knowledge to help your operation grow. We understand the challenges facing our producers and are eager to assist with all the financial needs of your farm. We understand the challenges because our ag lenders have true ag experience. Second quarter action coming up here. Russ Oak Steinfield is hosting this contest between the number 14th ranked Crofton Warriors and the number five ranked Cedar Catholic Trojans. Six to six your score, Bo, as advertised, running. Yep, very tight score. It's going to be whoever makes the most mistakes is going to be what makes the difference in this game. Down here on the track in front of us is the Oar. This one's a traditional war for the Oar, one of those couple river towns trade this trophy back and forth every year. Cedars held it, I believe, the last three years, though. Second down and five, called a long five-year ball at the about the 39-yard line. Is now Crofton going left to right with rain picking up again here in the field. Man in motion coming, quick pitch into number 14. That's Tramp, straight forward, quick into the outside. He's got a lot of green grass. One man to beat is going to be brought down. A touchdown saving tackle there by number 70. That's Taney. Otherwise, Tramp was going to walk that one in. Yeah, our defensive line and even the linebackers, those line, linemen got up on them and just got them pushed back and created that sealed off a wall almost. Ebb and flow, a little bit of energy goes one side, then the next. Now, Crofton definitely has it. The flow is all in their back right now. Allen is running back to this side. The other running back there, it's William Poppy. And then on the far side, that's Jimmy Allen. They're the running backs. Allen's now coming in motion this direction. Quick pitch to Allen. Straightforward. Good blocking. And a great saving tackle there. Again, I believe that was Easton Becker from his nose tackle position making the stop there. We'll bring up second down and about five for Crofton. It just looks like that little motion pitch, and it'll either continue on or they're cutting it back against the green. It's almost... It's boring, but yet it's very effective. I think this this rain benefits Crofton a little more than us because we were having a lot of play action pass, and it's tough to pass when it's starting to. It's definitely raining now here, a little, a little more than a drizzle. I formation for Crofton here, second down and five. One wide out to the near side of the field. Handoff is to the second man through. Breaks a tackle, breaks another tackle, and is going to be brought down, but not before a first down run. Ball will be placed right at the 15 yard line. As the weatherman's showing here, and we definitely have rain for a little while yet. Green on the radar and green grass in front of us. We're going to get wet here for the next little bit. Again, rivalry game. Lots of people in the stands. We're not even giving away a pickup tonight. How is that pickup? 
Oh, it's great. It's great. Well, I'm sure somebody's loving it. Yeah. <laughs> we'll have to get an update from that. Yeah, a gentleman up in Yankton's driving it around, I'm sure. Man in motion. That's Allen going to the far side. Jet sweep. Loose. Oh, that's loose. Cedar Catholic jumps on it. Cedar Catholic with a big time turnover there. And there's that rain coming into play. The wet ball as Allen lost the handle on it. And it, it just it popped out of his arms like a greased pig, and luckily our boys covered it up real tight. I think number two, Noah Arns, jumped on that one. I'll watch the replay here, but that thing comes squirting out of there as Allen just never did quite get a good handle on it, and it was coming flying out of there. Smart play there by number 24. I was watching the replay. That's Owen Hymas. He continued with the tackle and basically pulled the pulled uh, the running back tramp down and allowed Cedar Catholic to go and get that fumble. So handoff now is to the second man through with Becker and a good stop. No gain on the play. Making a tackle for Crofton is number 12, the quarterback, when he's on offense. That's Zach Weber. Number 30, uh, Carter Arns came in motion, kind of acted like a lead blocker there, and it looked like there was... We had the fullback, Carter Arns, and then Easton, but still couldn't get free through the line of scrimmage. So one mistake by Cedar Catholic was very important, and a big one there by Crofton, and I think we was kind of cancel out now, and here we go again. Pistol formation as Tate is in the gun. Four wide outs, option play, a little screen on the far side. Charlie catches it. Good blocking, cross first down, still on his feet, almost to midfield. It is going to be tripped up at the 46-yard line. A helmet comes flying off there from a Crofton player. And a flag is going to be in the backfield. We'll see what the call is. Might have a holding call on that location. We shall see. Ineligible receiver downfield. Uh, yep. So, uh, lineman. That, that's actually an RPO, a run pass option. If you notice, Tate, he ran a speed option, straight ahead or a veer option. And then he spread out, but he's got a he's got another option with Charlie releasing and running out pattern. That's a tough spot for a lineman to be in because if he decides to run, you want to keep going and get in front of yep. him. But if he chooses to pass, and you're more than I think five yards is three question, yards, three yards. So so you don't get much room. Yeah, so, that makes it de very difficult for those linemen. So that there is going to be a a 35 yard swing of events. Second down and 15 here for Cedar Catholic now. 9.05 to go in the first half. And another run pass option play. Now it's passed over to the far side. It's going to be caught and shoved out of bounds. Late shove that out of bounds. Be, uh, that's borderline it late hit. Really, but. really late there as it is. Carter Arns, the receiver, is shoved out of bounds. And it will be third down and seven now for Cedar Catholic. Yes. Yeah, all the way across the field, it looks like they're out of bounds, still shoving, but yeah, it's just how it could be the angle. A D, I don't know which defensive lineman is getting through, but he's coming through kind of untouched. And four wide receivers now. Tate looking to the near side. He's looking good coverage there. Now Tate's gonna throw this one up. Noah, it's gonna be tripped oh, up. Yeah. There it is. Here comes the flag at the 45 as Noah was tripped up as he was trying to make a turn to get in position to catch that ball. He was getting ball. pulled all over. Uh, let's just march it off twice as many yards. There's two flags, Bo. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I wish it worked that way. Yeah. As yeah, you get the official call here, and that will be pass interference on the defense. So that would be an automatic first down, and Cedar Catholic will move those chains. Now, I don't know if Noah Arns had his man beat or not, but I know Tate, Tate was just giving him a chance to catch yeah. the ball, and sometimes that's good when there's – you know that defender's all over your man. Just throw it up, and they'll throw that flag. The first receiver it looked like he was looking at was the one who was coming to the near sideline, and he is covered. So, yeah, Tate just didn't have much to do except throw it up and give your guy a chance. It's those, almost like a punt at that point, so it wouldn't be hurt, much hurt from that Those kind of plays, are, they're pretty disheartening to a defense when you think you have it all wrapped up, and then silly little flag like yep. that get you. First down and 10 ball at, we'll call it about the 45-yard line of Cedar Catholic now. I formation looks like we got Kirby and Becker. Quick pitch coming to the near side. And great defense. If you look, we'll have to watch that on replay, but they're not really covering that receiver at very close out there. They got a corner that's crept in watching that quick pitch, that, that toss sweep that we got going. So if you could do a quick pass out there, it might be beneficial. Quick little pass out. 
get past that corner and get some good positive yards as is. That one's going to gain of nothing. Great defensive stand for Croft in second down and 10. 8.13 to go here in the first half, and now it is definitely raining, getting harder as we go along here. Looking to pass. There's a quick pass off to the far side. Ooh, dangerous. Charlie is off his fingers as it was a fall incomplete now. We got a bit of a mismatch out there against Charlie. It looks like their uh, cover man out there is about a foot shorter than Charlie, which is still a pretty tall kid. Just Charlie's that tall. Tight game like this. I... I'm thinking ahead here. If we get five yards, do we go for it? I don't know. It's going to be close. Third and ten here for Cedar Catholic. Two receivers to the far side. Tate now scrambling around. He's in deep trouble. Keeping it. Put his head down across the 50. First down yardage. And he's going to be brought down at the 42-yard line. First down, Cedar Catholic. Smart play by Tate. He didn't have. He knew he was in trouble, and he knew all those defenders were backed off the ball and in coverage, so... Tuck it and run. That's where the benefit of having a speedy quarterback and the downside of having those big linemen. They can't keep y up with it. Yep, exactly. And Coach Cotto's doing a smart thing. He's spreading things out. That's that's the system that's working tonight. And I know when I talked to him earlier this year, that's what he wanted to do, get his skill, per, skill players in, on an island out there with the other team. They crowd the box again. Hand off this time to Becker. Man, in the backfield. Becker breaks one. He's going to get a hard-fought four yards. But the defense is absolutely shooting through the gap and just disrupting plays in the backfield. A little over seven minutes to go here in the first half. 6-6 six, six your score. Tight contest. You mentioned Cedar Catholic. They fell from number one down to two and into three. And they keep falling in the polls, but it just all has to do with you know, the toughness of schedule and, and what those other teams, how they're doing. But coming in rank number five, they're the last... Undefeated team in the top five. There's only four of them. One, two, three, four also that way as well. Hand off the first man through, and he's going to be brought down. A gain of, give him a gain of three. He'll bring up third down and maybe four. I think it's four down territory here. At this point, yes. And this point in the game, it is four down territory, in my opinion. This is, but luckily, that's not my decision to make either. Yeah. Uh, I guess it depends if you get if you get down to fourth and two, fourth and one. Yeah, I'd, I'd probably really push to try to go for it. But if we take a loss of seven, eight yards, probably, I don't know. Handoff is to the first man through, and he's going to be, Kirby's going to have it, I believe. He is close. Really close. I think they got it. Looking at the side judge on the far side where he's standing, let's see what the official call is. They might be measuring. Yep, official timeout. So they're going to do an official measure. It's at the 30. It's right there. 32, 32 and a half. So we're definitely, we're not in field goal range. We need another 15 yards. And the wind is at the at our back now, but ball's heavier, wet. Yep. Even going through the rain is a little bit slower. Bad snaps can happen. But even if you got a fourth and one, you just do a quarterback sneak. You should be able to get a yard or two easily on that. Lots of referees. And we're going to say this is about three inches. Well, I say it's uh, we're going for it. Quarterback keeper, line up right, put a bunch of running backs behind him, and just everybody go for it. Eye formation, yep. Downhill. You could do a hard count, but you don't want your lineman to jump. I'd like to welcome Joyce Taney to tonight's broadcast. She says go for it as well on fourth down. 6.23 to go here in the first half. Big play here. I formation as Taney under center. And there it is. Straight forward running. He's got it. First down for Cedar Catholic, and that'll move the chains. That's a pretty important play. Yes, very important play. And a smart play, too. Burn some more clock up. Play a little keep away and keep it out of the hands of their big quarterback. Again, first down and 10 ball now at the 30, right at the 30 yard line. Three wide outs heading down the far side. Tate scrambling. He's got a man over the middle. Carter runs. He's going to be about this caught in triple coverage. Outstanding catch by the receiver, number 30, Carter Arns. And Carter Arns is a big target, big, strong kid, and he just 
He went up and got that. He wanted the ball more than the defenders did. Beautiful catch. Beautiful throw. <laughs> Tate, what are you doing? There's three defenders there, <laughs> Tate. <laughs> Let your big men make a play. Pretty quiet on the Crofton side of the fans over here. Pretty quiet right now. First down and goal to goal ball at the six yard line. I formation handoff to the second man through as Becker and he's going to be tripped up. Give him a gain of one. It will be second down. That might be one of the better plays I've seen Cedar make this year. That was a pretty important play. Carter Arns now checks back in. Noah Arns comes out as we are second and goal. Ball at the five. One wide out to the near side. That's Charlie Schrader. He's one-on-one -on -one coverage here. You could see a play here, a jump ball, as Charlie's got the height advantage down in the corner, lower left of your screen. That would be a smart play to have happen. Nope. A lot of blockers out front. Easton still trying. Did he get it? it looks like I a ball might have came out. The ball came out. And it, Cedar Catholic retains possession. There was a fumble as Easton was trying to dive into the end zone. And now Cedar Catholic will have a third and goal, and it's at about the one. It is down there. I couldn't see the ball come out. I only saw the side judge, yep. the way his reaction was. You knew the ball and, was out. And those players, the ball comes out no matter what. Easton Becker's knee might have been down, and but they see the ball come out. They're all going to try for it. It's got to be right about the one. So third but, and goal from the one. Maryland Eye. Maryland Eye coming up. And there's going to be a timeout. Let's see who's going to call it. And Crofton wants to talk things over. We'll be back in one minute. At Cedar County Veterinary Services in Hardington, we care for creatures great and small. We offer comprehensive care for livestock and companion animals. Our goal with every visit is to provide an experience that focuses on accurate diagnostics, compassionate treatment of animals, and client education. With our highly skilled staff, we are here to give you a happy and healthy animal. Christensen Well and Irrigation is your professional in the water well industry with over 40 years of experience and knowledge. Christensen Well is also a TL Irrigation Systems dealer and can service and repair all brands of pivots. Call Christensen Well and Irrigation today at 402-254-6801. Third and goal, ball at the one-yard line. Maryland I formation, quick pitch to Becker to the far side. He's got blockers out in front, puts his head down, and there's the call. Touchdown, Cedar Catholic. There was nothing easy about that one. No, that was still a tough run for Easton Becker, and he managed to get it done. Becker averaging 150 yards a game, and he is on pace to come up well short of that as we're almost halfway through this contest. They are going to try to bottle him up and not let him get free. Every yard he earns tonight is going to be hard-earned for sure. Arns will now coming in, attempt the extra point, and try to make this a 13-6 to contest. Snap. The hold is down. Arns' good kick is up, and it's good. Cedar Catholic, a well hard-earned touchdown and extra point there. 4.17 to go in the first half. They're on top, 13-7. CL Electric of Coleridge carries a full line of rinky pivot parts. Hi, I'm Marie Haar, Vice President and Ag Lender at Bank of Hardington, and a Northeast Nebraska dairy and beef producer. Whether it's developing a marketing strategy, a break-even analysis, or cash flow projections, at the Bank of Hardington, we understand the ever-changing demands and challenges of today's grain and livestock producers. We understand these challenges because we are farmers and we're living it too. Thirteen to six, your score for seventeen to go in the first half of play. Bank of Hardington is tonight's feature sponsor. Thank them for tonight's broadcast. Bring you Cedar Catholic Trojan football. Tough first half so far here, Bo. 
yeah, it's very tough. Two teams just kind of slugging it out. A little bit more uh, finesse and maybe uh, trying to think of a word here for Cedar Catholics. Uh, Crofton just likes to send you with the right cross every single time. Yeah, nothing fancy. Good kick here. This one's going to be fielded by, uh, I don't know which Allen, one. Allen, I Allen, believe. Yep. Still on his feet. Nice return. Nice return with four minutes to go in this game, and the Crofton fans like that one. He is a dang Both of those two back there are dangerous return men, but it helps when you got those big old hosses up front paving the way for you. And this game is going to pave the way going for next week. Cedar Catholic is going to go down to number one ranked Oakland Craig, follow it up, go into Ponca, and then come back here and finish up the regular season on the 23rd against Norfolk Catholic. Hopefully that paves way to get into some postseason play. Yes, very much so. First and 10 for Crofton back in that tight formation. As now Weber's going to keep it. He's looking downfield. It's going to be overshot, and that will be incomplete. Number two, Noah Arns even made a play down there. Could have possibly intercepted that, but just couldn't make the grab. So four minutes to go here. Cedar Catholic has three timeouts. Crofton has two. If one Cedar Catholic can get the ball back here in a couple minutes. Yeah, we could they could put a couple more points on the board and then they get the ball to start the second half. Yeah, stretch your legs a little bit here. Half time here in a couple minutes. We're gonna have Coach Chad Cato on talking football. What else is Coach gonna talk about? Tune in here in about four minutes. And listen to his interview that we got here a day or so ago. Second down now for Crofton. Handoff is to the first man through, and he's going to be tripped up. Nice defense there, making a stop for Cedar Catholic. I think that was Kirby. And that will bring up third down. And good play by the defense there, knowing their jobs and staying home where they need to be. The way that, that was, there's a lot of misdirection happening there, and uh, 14 just came back across the green, and luckily our man stepped up and made that play. If we can get a stop here, I would expect a timeout to come into play. Save a couple minutes on the clock, or at least another 35 seconds. Yep. Get our we offense. might see a pass play here. This will be the third pass play for Crofton tonight. Allen's coming out here now, joining three receivers. It is a quick screen, wide receiver screen. Great play. Miles is going to blow it up right at the line of scrimmage. Fourth down coming up, an outstanding play. Miles read that from the get-go, and which he's a smart player. You could kind of see that happening. That's what they were going to do from the get-go. If you got some good football knowledge. Coach Cotto's keeping his timeout in his pocket. Now just under three minutes to go here in the first half. The momentum right now is definitely in the sails of Cedar Catholic. You need to be a smart players here and don't cause any penalties. Austin Tramp now set to... You got to rush that off. kicker yet, though, because he might take off and run in that rugby-style punt. Two... Receivers back for Cedar Catholic is Arns and there are two Arns as possibly. And now there's a timeout on the field. So this is going to be timeout. And we'll be back here in one minute. On hand and ready to tune up your pivot. Wheel gear boxes, tower boxes, timers, contactors, end gun stars, and switches. CL Electric is an electrical contractor licensed in both Nebraska and South Dakota. Call 402-283-4220. At Central Valley Ag, your local cooperative, we focus on helping you select the best products and services that will benefit your operation. To learn more, visit cvacoop.com. Central Valley Ag, growing agriculture together. Fourth down and eight here for Crofton as the rain is now going a little bit sideways, wind picking up. So this kick by Tramp will be going into the wind. Jimmy Christensen and Arns, I believe, are back for Cedar Catholic. Rugby style kick. Almost got a block on it there as it is. Let that one hit and go out of bounds and it'll go sideways. And at the 28 yard line, that's where Cedar's going to take over with 2.21 to go in the first half of play, up 13 to 6. 
So if you're Coach Cotto, Scott, which what do you think you're gonna, what are you gonna come out trying to do? You know, if the previous five games I just said, oh, it's an Easton Becker show. You know, I want I want four wide receivers. I want Tate doing his thing, scrambling around a little bit. That I, seems to be what's kind of, uh, and here comes four wideouts. Yep. That's what so far has worked for Cedar Catholic. This spread them out formation. You got three timeouts. Use them when you need them. Quarterback keeper straight forward. It runs into the back of Easton Becker, and he's going to be brought down. Let's see if we burn a timeout here. Now on this last play, if you look at the when they lined up. They don't that inside receiver on the far side of the field. They got a guy backed off quite a way. Quite a ways. You could almost do a little quick pass out there. Let's see if Crofton does the same thing again on this play. Under two minutes now to go here in the first half. For those of you listening at home, you're loving it. It's warm in your house. Everybody up here is wearing garbage bags and raincoats. Now Tate scrambling into the far side. He's got a receiver at almost first down yardage. I don't know who it is. That's Charlie, I believe. And yep. it will be first down. Hurry up offense. That will stop the clock with 140 to go in the first half. Still three timeouts for Cedar Catholic as they move the chains, get things reset here. As all plays now are being audibled in. we got to hurry up, boys. Got to be a quick, bit quicker. Still four wide receivers for Cedar Catholic. As now flag comes in late. This is probably going to be a motion. So yeah. illegal motion on Cedar Catholic. Or procedure penalty. That'll back them up five yards. You get that when you're kind of running, a little hurry yep. up. And, you get and, I, and they haven't had to do it much this year, and game-type situations compared to practice is a little different. You think about that. It's in October. They haven't even had a practice in the rain yet this year. Not mm. once. No. Four wideouts now. Everybody's going down, turning in. Oh, oh and he was looking there for Carter Arns but at about the first down yardage, but... Carter was not looking for the ball. No. Miscommunication. Carter ran, probably ran the wrong route. He was pro probably on a stop. That's one of those dangerous ones where he kept going and the ball's behind him. It can easily be picked off then. One twelve to go now as this is going to be second down and 15. Offense sputtering just a little bit here in the two-minute drill. I'd like to find Miles right over the middle. That might be good. Miles out to the scramble zone. It's going to be knocked down. Um, so that's going to be an incomplete pass. Incomplete, luckily. So he was trying to do a quick pass to the bottom here to Miles. That one's going to be knocked down. Clock stops again now, 108. And it's third and long. You almost got to do, do a run play and... Run, uh, let some time run off the clock. Crofton, they're still sitting on one timeout. So they might just call a timeout and then yeah. you're forced to punt. Chess. chess. I know. Chess game. It is very much so. I'd say let your players run a route and hopefully you connect. And this is what it's going to be. So straight forward. Oh, he's he's oh. got it. Cross over mid 50. He's going to oh, have first down yardage. First Outstanding down. play. And out of bounds with a minute to go. Tate saved the day with that one there. So that was a chess match of Cotto says, hey, we're going to run it, make you use your timeout. Mm -hmm. I like that. But and he'd get a first down out of it anyway. So first down, Cedar Catholic still in business here. Field goal, they need to get the ball to about the, the 17. Yeah. You know, right around the 20-yard line. That would be about the limit, I think. So 30 yards, you get, get 30 yards here in a minute with three timeouts. Three wide outs to the near as Tate looking, steps back up into the pocket. He's got some green grass in front of him. Right at first down yardage and he's going to be knocked down after a 14 yard gain. Stop the clock, move the chains. Still have three timeouts. Coach Cotto, yeah. Little teeny magic is happening right now. And Coach Cotto is going to take a timeout, I believe, and he will take a timeout. We'll be back in 60 seconds. Hi, I'm Dana Adama, 
manager and egg lender at the Bank of Hardington, Nibro Loan Production Office. I'm also a Northeast Nebraska beef producer. At the Bank of Hardington, we work with our clients to develop financial plans that help them meet their goals. We know that for our farmers, it is much more than a job. It's a way of life. How do we know? Because we are farmers and we are living it too. First down and 10 here, Cedar Catholic now knocking on the door. Ball's going to be right at the 31-yard line. Another 10 yards will be right at that field goal range. Two timeouts left for Cedar Catholic. And pass to the near side. He's got it wide open as Miles. If he can break this tackle, and he does. He's going to get around about the 21. It's going to be close to a first down. And there's another timeout. Cedar Catholic going to talk it over. We're I gonna... think Miles was trying to get out of bounds on that play, so... Couldn't quite make it. We'll be back here in one minute. At Family First Dental, your family comes first. They are your source for complete dental care in Northeast Nebraska. Dr. Jay Bernecker and his team at the Hardington office is pleased to announce that they offer digital impressions, which means no more goop, no gags, and no worries. They also offer Invisalign, a clear, removable alternative to metal braces. At Family First Dental, you can get the smile you've always wanted. Give them a call today at 402-254-3969. Many student athletes have worked hard preparing for the upcoming sports seasons. Farm Bureau agent Alan Walton, along with his team of sales associates, Brett Klug, Lynette Cry, and Lane Walton, wish each of you all the best in this year's competitions. Strength, stability, and service. At Farm Bureau Financial Services, you can count on all three. Farm Bureau's dedicated team is here to make sure you have the coverage you need and that you're getting the discounts you deserve. Schedule a super check and see how they make insurance simple. Straightforward play there leads to another first down for Cedar Catholic, and that will stop the clock. 39 seconds to go. As Miles on a quarterback, or rather Tate, sorry, Tate on a quarterback keeper. And now the clock after the chains reset, they are going. So 34 seconds, only one timeout for each team. Pass to the near side. Does he get out of bounds? He does not. And there's a last call timeout. Cedar Catholic will take their timeout. We'll be back in 30 seconds. Get what you know about carpet. Valera High Performance Carpet from Shaw Floors is designed for beauty and performance. From top to bottom, Valera is built for protection, combining unbeatable fiber and technology and stain resistance with superior backing. This carpet blocks spills and pet accidents from soaking through your subfloor. Perfect for active homes requiring the cleanest carpet for healthy living. No surprises, no worries, just beautiful carpet. Find Valera by Shaw Floors at Phase Furniture and Floor Coverings, downtown Hardington, or call 402-254-6347. Scott Alker alongside Bo Benson bringing you Cedar Catholic Trojan football. First half, player 24 seconds to go. Cedar Catholic on top, 13-6. to six. But now this chess match continues. I don't know what we're going to do here. Yeah. We're out of timeouts. Dangerous no man's land there. If you get stopped over the middle and you don't get in the end zone, you could easily run out of time. I've been looking up at the top of the screen. Uh, Charlie Schrader out there. He's a big target, 6'5", six, 6'6". Six, six. Put him on a little flag route or a fade route and toss it up and let him go up and jump up and grab it. Coming straight over the middle to Carter Arns, and that's almost picked off. Wow. <laughs> yeah, Tramp is uh, playing safety, and he was watching that all the way. Oh, wow. That's just good football. We call that time out there to stop the clock and schedule play, and yet their defense, they're like, uh -uh. <laughs> we're going to dial something up here too. 20 seconds exactly to go, third down and seven. So right at the edge of field goal range, I think we're there. The trouble is you got to get the clock stopped if we, anything happens inbounds. Little hitch route. 
And now Tate scrambling around. Doesn't have anything. Going to have to get out of bounds. 15 seconds. First down, and he does get out of bounds. 11.6 on the clock. First down for Cedar Catholic. Now we take a couple shots, and you're still you're still able to... you got to take a shot to the end zone, though. And you could still have a chance at a field goal. There's about five people in a booth here, and I think I've heard seven different kind of theories of what we should be doing. Yes. <laughs> Four wide receivers for Cedar Catholic here. Might be the last play of the first half. Rolling out to the near side. Lost it up. It's got no arms open in the corner, and it's going to be incomplete. They were both out of bounds. Six seconds now to go in the first half. Coach, what are we going to do? Like, do we go for it? We'll kick a field goal? You got to go one more time. It's got to be a little bit quicker play, but I think you should try one more time. I'm calling field goal. We're going to take a penalty here pretty quick. Got to get going. I see one coach on the sideline waving his hand in a circle saying, run it again. So let's see what happens here. Watch it took a long time to get that play and watch a back judge here so we don't run out of time. You do not want to take a penalty. There's the back judge. You got five seconds to go. They get the snap off. Four, three. You got to throw this one up into the corner, and it's going to be tipped oh. incomplete in the corner of the end zone with a half a second left. Now we kick a field goal. Now we kick a field goal. <laughs> that was that was good <laughs> clockwork there by <laughs> Mr. Taney. Yeah, that was real good. Wow. Yeah, that was go with the field goal. I, I told you we should ran one more play, but that was good, though. That was close. Charlie, Yeah, he about came down with that one. He jumped a little bit too early, though, it seems. I can see the defender was there. had his hands up like, uh, I didn't do nothing. Because yeah. he didn't want to get a penalty. So this one's going to be set on the right hash. This can be a little tricky, kind of trying to slide it in from the far side over there. This is not a straightforward kick. And now a timeout's going to uh, come think in. They're going to ice him, and yep. we're going to keep it live right here. Again, want to thank our sponsors for tonight's broadcast. We'll get many more of them in on the second half, and uh, a big shout out to Bank of Hardington for tonight's featured broadcast sponsor. Thirteen to six. I've been saying for the past couple weeks, I thought Cedar was going to come in here really and kind of roll. And and a good friend of mine who's, who's seen Crofton play, he's like, no, no, don't kid yourself. They are much better than than the previous years. So And he is right on the money. So shout out to Scott Kuster. I know they're broadcasting for 94.3 The Current here tonight. They follow a lot of Cedar football as well as Crofton. So glad to have them here tonight broadcasting. All set to go here as number four, Blake Arns is coming on. If you can't bump this up, make it a 10 point contest. Snaps down, kick is up. Kick is good. Kick is good. There it is. Good play at the end of the half. That's a way to finish. No time on the clock. Cedar Catholic takes a 10 point lead, 16 to six year score. What a big momentum booster going into halftime. And Cedar Catholic gets the ball to start the second half, so that'll we'll see what Coach Cotto dials up here at halftime. All right, well, it looks like we're going to have the Cedar Catholic girls dance team. They're going to go out there. If they do their normal routine, <laughs> they're rolling around in the mud out there. It's <laughs> raining. So we're going to have that, and then uh, shortly after that, we will have Coach Chad Cotto coming up here. So we're going to turn over and let you listen here to the girls dance team.
We're here with Hardington Cedar Catholic head football coach Chad Cotto. Coach Cotto, thanks for coming in. Uh, hard to believe season's already over halfway finished, uh, but so far so good. I know we talked about uh, preseason, we want to get off to a good start, and we have. Yeah. I mean, 4 0, that, that's really great to see. Uh, let's talk about the first game on the Hill. Uh, yeah, on the Hill game, you know, we made a lot of mistakes, but we were able to overcome those. Uh, you know, they, they have a nice group, very athletic team. Uh, you know, unfortunately, they lost their quarterback to a season-ending injury after we played them, so that's kind of hurt them. But, uh, you know, the biggest thing that was for us was a, a big mental uh, thing. So the next Monday, you know, kids' attitudes were very good, and, and they took a great uh, approach into the Battle Creek game. You know, so getting off to that early, quick start really helped us out a lot. Mm -hmm. Uh, so yeah, let's talk about Battle Creek. Battle Creek comes to down, uh, overtime win, uh, which is another great step forward. It seems like the kids overcome. Uh, let's talk a little bit about that game. Uh, yeah, you know, that was one of those we kind of figured it was a 50-50 game, and, you know, I thought their their speed would be a big thing for us, and early on it, it was, uh, you know, but, but we made some good tackling adjustments as the game went on, and, you know, we were able to get it to overtime, and, and you know, Blake kicked the the field goal in overtime to win it for us. So, you know, very exciting uh, day for our kids. And, you know, I haven't seen them react like that from after a win for a long time. Mm -hmm. uh, next game was to Kama Herman. Uh, another tough game. I mean, they're, they're all tough. I mean, you don't know what you're going to get at times. Uh, let's talk a little bit about that one. Uh, you know, that one we got off to a really good start early and, and kind of put them on their heels and, you know, things just continue to go our way and you know we were lucky enough that was the first game of the year everybody got to play got a little bit of time so you know it was exciting for uh, all of our kids when when they all get to play on a friday night mm -hmm. uh so then the next up on the schedule was a thursday night game at david city uh let's let's talk a little bit about that one uh you know we knew that one was going to be difficult uh you know david city is a team they're in the second year under a new coach and they just continue to get better and and, uh, you know, they play very physical. They've got three state champion or state runner-up wrestlers, uh, you know, so you know that those are good, tough kids, and, and their entire team plays that way, and they, they play very uh, very fast, and, and it was a tough game for us, and, you know, we were happy to get out of there with a win. Mm -hmm. So we got four games underneath our belt. Uh, as far as how are we looking physically with the boys as far as injuries and stuff like that, in pretty good shape so far? Yeah, we lost Brett Kleinschmidt week one uh, to the torn labrum, but other, otherwise we've survived up to this point. So, you know, that's been very good. Very, We're very fortunate for that because, you know, as we all know, one injury can completely change, uh, you know, what a team is able to do. Right. Uh, so the next game we had on the schedule was uh, Bancroft, Rosalie, Lions, Decatur. Let's talk a little bit about that one. Uh, yeah, we went down there, and again, our kids got off to a pretty decent start and kind of got them on their heels. They were actually missing a couple kids with COVID, uh, you know, but we were fortunate to be able to play that game. And, and uh, you know, we, we had good balance between run and pass that night, and it really helped us and kind of set us up for uh, tonight's game. Mm -hmm. uh, so far, the weather 
keep our fingers crossed. It's been good. Uh, I think Friday night, tonight's game is, is uh, going to be, the weather is supposed to be pretty good. Uh, let's talk a little bit about Croft and coming to town. Uh, we kind of talked about a little bit of a rivalry game. Uh, what do they have and what have you seen on film? Uh, you know, very similar to they have been every year. Uh, you know, they run a lot of the double wing stuff. They have, they're very physical up front. You know, they're going to be bigger than we are up front. Uh, you know, so it's it's a game where we're going to have to use a little bit of hopefully our speed against them. Uh, you know, they, they like to run downhill between tackles. And, and, you know, it's always a unique and difficult offense to stop just because you don't see it a lot. And, uh, you know, they, they run it very well. Uh, you know, defensively, they typically play a 4-3, and, and they're very aggressive with it. You know, they're very well coached and, and very fundamentally sound. So, you know, I know the game should be close. It usually is. Um, you know, and, I, and I, again, it's a rivalry game, and I, and I know our kids have had a great week of practice, so I just hope that transitions into the way we play. Great. Well, thanks again for coming in, Coach Cottle. Uh, best of luck in the second half. And uh, we'll, we'll be talking to you later on down the season. Thank you. Okay, thanks. Hi, I'm Cindy Bruns, manager and ag lender at the Bank of Hardington Bloomfield Loan Production Office. I'm also a Northeast Nebraska beef producer. At the Bank of Hardington, we strive to build relationships based on trust and service that last generations. We understand the challenges facing our producers and are eager to assist with all the financial needs of your farm. We understand the challenges because our ag lenders have true ag experience. Walker's Brothers Garage Incorporated is a full service preventative maintenance and auto repair center located in Hardington. Our experts have the knowledge to service and repair even the most challenging auto problems on all makes and models of domestic and import vehicles. Stop in or give us a call at 402-254-6406 to let us know how we can help you. Stop down or call Floral Designs to let your favorite student or athlete know that you are thinking of them on game day with a delivery to school. Your local small town florist provides the surrounding areas with custom design work, fresh flowers, balloons, candy, gifts, home decor, and more. Floral Designs located on Broadway Avenue in Hardington. Surprise your loved ones with something special today. Call 402-254-3943. Give the guys at Hardington Feed and Chick a call for a competitive grain bid or to contract your corn for a later delivery or for all of your livestock feeding needs. Hardington Feed and Chick has been the leader in animal nutrition since 1955. Just call 402-254-7449. Grossenberg Implement is your John Deere Farm Equipment Headquarters, servicing your growing needs with locations in Hardington, Bloomfield, and Wayne, Nebraska, and Winter, Phillip, and Pierce, South Dakota. The Hardington Shopper, covering Northeast Nebraska for over 55 years, from Yankton to Laurel and Osmond to Newcastle. The Hardington Shopper has you covered every week to every household. Good luck to all the area teams. For over 30 years, Hardington Tree is your one source tree service and tree health care provider, servicing Northeast Nebraska and beyond. We are committed to tree preservation, offering expert tree pruning services, comprehensive plant health care programs, and are specialists at hazardous tree removal, utilizing the latest and best equipment. Contact us today for an estimate. If you're thinking of buying or selling, Jane Seiler, realtor with Don Peterson & Associates, welcomes you to come visit with her. Jane is here to help with the whole process to get you into that dream property. You'll find Jane at the Don Peterson & Associates office, downtown Hardington.
For the right products and expert advice to get your projects done right, come to Cruzy True Value. In every department, you'll find terrific items that will help make each job go a little more smoothly. If you need tools for those once-in-a-lifetime projects or equipment for a once-in-a-lifetime event, rent it at Cruzy True Value. Start right, start here. A game changer for the Western Corn Belt is here. Enlist E3 soybeans from Hogemeyer, the most advanced herbicide system available for control of your most stubborn weeds without compromising yields. Just one more way the local experts at Hogemeyer Hybrids are giving you the right seed for right here. Call Aaron Fuelberth at 402-841-4683. Piney Electric is a dealer and services both valley irrigation and souk-up grain systems. In addition to the equipment lines, we drill wells, install pumps, perform crane work, provide trucking and earth moving services. Located in Hardington and Vermilion, South Dakota. Give us a call today at 402-254-2568. Mark Bruning Trucking hopes all athletes have a great and healthy season this year. Your hard work and dedication proves that you're in it for the long haul. Mark, his family, and the truck drivers at Mark Bruning Trucking enjoy being able to follow the sports season, whether they're at home or on the road. Good luck to all area teams. Take your bank with you wherever you go with mobile banking from Security Bank. Mobile banking offers you the ultimate in on-demand service, allowing access to your account information right from your mobile phone. Pay your bills, pay back a friend, and now even deposit a check, all with just a tap of a finger. Now that's my kind of bank. Check us out online at mysecbank.com. Security Bank, member FDIC. When it comes to all your tax planning, tax preparation, bookkeeping, and payroll needs, Milbrough Siler Bookkeeping and Tax Service has been the place to go. They've been providing high quality, professional tax and bookkeeping services to the surrounding area for over 30 years. In addition to these services, Milbrough Siler also offers an array of financial services. Stop in today at 106 West Main in Hardington to see what Milbrough Siler has to offer. Call Northeast Grinding for custom hay and high moisture corn grinding. We have multiple grapple grinding units and have an array of screen sizes with economical rates. Give Patrick a call for all your grinding needs at 402-640-6160. Call Northeast Pipe and Panel, a local company for all your fencing needs. They make four five, six, and seven bar by 20 foot continuous fence panels, and 10 foot and 12 foot portable corral panels. The pipe and panels are all American made right here in Hardington. Call Rob or Pam Howell at 402-254-9585 or 877-207-1048. Our shop is located in Hardington Industrial Park. Reps is Hardington's only 24-hour fitness center, and they challenge you to get fit. Stop by and check out the fitness equipment and our complete array of weight machines. Reps offers daily group fitness classes. Call 402-254-2474 or visit us at www.repsfitness.com. Kaiser Ag and Irrigation is your local Zomatic dealer. Call us today for all of your pivot servicing, parts, and purchasing at 402-254-9557. Shifter Employee Scheduling and Time Clock makes it easy to manage and build the team schedule and track attendance, all from your desktop or the mobile app. From employees to volunteers, Shifter works with all industries across the board and teams of all sizes. Visit www.shifter.works to learn more or check out the Shifter Android or Apple mobile app for your employee scheduling and time clock needs.
The cold and flu season is just around the corner. Stefan Drug has all your over-the-counter cold and flu remedies in stock, and they also fill your prescriptions in a convenient, friendly fashion. Stop by Stefan Drug, your full-service pharmacy, at 214 North Broadway in Hardington. All right, second half action, just about set to go here. A couple things I'm taking away from the halftime. Number one, it's cold. Two, it's raining out. Uh, yeah, it is really raining now. Went outside, talked to a few guys, and quickly came right back in the confines of this warm, dry booth here, as this is the hardest it has been raining all night long, and that is good for Cedar Catholic, in my opinion. Yes and no. It's going to make uh, that passing game a little more difficult, but also it... Those big boys might not get as much traction, and the cutting of the running backs might might help affect that. So we'll see. We'll see what happens here as this plays out. Went out there and talked to a few guys. Some of them are sponsors of tonight's game and kind of get their feel of what they saw. And they said the same thing, like, wow, we are little compared to these guys. But everyone out there is impressed with Zach Weber, the senior quarterback. I think he will be the difference maker in the second half. We'll see what we can do. Just about set to go. This one is up. Cedar Catholic is all set back, going to receive it. And it, there's the ring, comes into play, picks it up at the 20, and it's going to be knocked down a big hit at the 25. And that's where Cedar Catholic will take over. Yeah, we could have, you could have multiple fumbles. Yes. That's center to quarterback exchanges. There's a whole lot of stuff coming into play. Especially when you get in that shotgun snap, that gets a little, it can get a little hairy and, you never know what what might happen in that. Four years ago, we called the Crofton game here, and there was a punt. It rained so hard that day and that night. The punt went up, and when it came down and landed, it literally stuck right there in the mud. It never even bounced. It, we're not those conditions yet, but two wideouts to the far. There, Easton Becker fell down, got back up, and there's the rain coming into play. Still going to get a gain of a couple on that one. We'll bring up second down. So Easton tried to take off there, lost his footing, and I think everybody's just going to have to slow their cuts down a little bit. Easton's one of those, uh, he's not flashy, he's not fancy, kind of like Kaiser was the past couple years. He was all over the place. Easton's a little more just straightforward running, and maybe that'll help him out a little bit. 13, rather, sorry, 16 to 6. Cedar Catholic has a 10-point lead after a tough first half. Handoff is to Becker, and he's going to be stopped. That was another consensus I got while talking to everybody at the halftime is they sure got the corral around Becker in the first half. Oh, yeah, they are. They definitely have his number. And if you look right there, there's three guys on him at that tackle. And that's that's the number one player to stop. But if you can get these other guys in the mix, that's going to be the difference maker or the difference of this game. Once again, the, the defenders are backed off. Long ways on those receivers. Third and seven as now Tate looking to the far side. He's got a receiver across the middle of the field. That's going to be Carter Arns, and that one's going to be caught at about the 40. Carter's been sure-handed with that football tonight. He's been very good. Just found a little cushion that defense, and that's going to be the difference, I think, tonight. If you can keep that going and wait for them to creep up, and then you're going to run a little stop and go and hit them deep. First and 10 ball at the 40 for Cedar Catholic. Now after that first down pass play, one wide out to the near side. That is Carter. I formation. Handoff is to Becker across that right side. Across the initial line of scrimmage. Broke a tackle at the 45. Cross midfield to the 50. Still on his feet. This is going to be shoved out of bounds at about the 35-yard line. But not before a 27-yard run, Easton Becker moves the chains. Yes, that, that finally he breaks so breaks out in the open there and the way he went 71 though big man chasing him down sure caught up but not yeah. before Easton gained about 20 25 yards it's Strand Sage for Crofton running down Easton Becker there stopping that long running play and another first down for Cedar Catholic continuing with the I formation for Cedar Catholic it's going to be Kirby and then Easton Becker. And handoff is again to Easton off that right side. Four to five yards and a flag is going to come in. I believe it's going to be a hold here. It looks like, I believe they're going to get Rohan maybe, but we'll see what the call is. 
official call, and there it is. So it is a hold You're on the left side of that line, and that will back him up 10 yards. $90 on split the pot. Didn't win that. No, you're about 40, 49 40, off. 49 off. Didn't win the pickup. That's all right. It's the first time I bought split the pot in a while, to be honest. Quick pitch coming to the near side. Now Easton Becker hits the brakes, turns back north-south. Great backside pursuit there by Crofton, and it is going to be second and long as I think you're going to lost about a half a yard on that one. Bring up second and 20. Yes. Crofton's just got that. They've seen these plays over the past 20 years, and they kind of know what we're going to do. This new spread is kind of giving them fits sometimes, but we'll see. Spread formation here for Cedar Catholic now. Second and long. Four wideouts heading downfield. Quick flick of the wrist across midfield. Did he get it? No. Back judge comes in and says, no, he trapped it. Would have been an outstanding catch there. I believe that was Carter Arns making that trap play. I'm going to watch it on replay here, but that back judge was quickly to come in and say, no, nope, third down. Continuing here, spread four wide outs. And I couldn't tell on the replay. It's tough. Becker. And now Tate's going to air this one out deep down the right sideline, giving his man a chance at about the nine, and it will go incomplete as Charlie just, ran out of real estate. Just couldn't haul her in there. And that's that's what I've been kind of wondering, how how long before Tate was just going to kind of throw it up for that big for some of these big receivers and let them go make the play. Great defense there. After giving up a couple first downs, Crofton buckled down. Cedar in a tough spot here. Fourth and 18, I think, is what officially is going to be. It's not four down territory, so they will punt the ball away. I believe first punt of the night, I think. I believe so. Directing traffic, getting the blockers where he wants them. Is Arns. And that one's going to be blocked. Outstanding play there by Crofton, and they will land on it. Mm. Ooh. That is a big play there. I didn't get the guy who blocked it, but I didn't either. It all happened pretty quick there. Watching a replay here, trying to get and see. It's come off that right side of the defensive scheme for Crofton. No, it was the 12. left edge. Yep. Number 12. Zach Weber, and there it is. Now he's quarterback, and he was off that left edge and got his left hand up there and blocked that punt. As it is, basically it was initial line of scrimmage. That's where they got it, gave the ball back over to Crofton. Straightforward running now, and across midfield, we brought down at the 48-yard line, and that was... Number five, yep. uh, Allen. Jimmy Allen there, you bet. He tried a little cutback across the green, and Cedar Catholic defense is doing their job and staying in, staying home and making the plays when they need to. Officially gain a four, second down and six for the Warriors. Now ball at the 49-yard line of Cedar Catholic. Weber straight back. Now Allen again, line of scrimmage, maybe got one, maybe two on it, and that will bring up third down. Couple of players shuttling off for Cedar Catholic there. Bringing some different linemen into the mix as now this third down play, pretty important here. I don't think we're four down territory. Maybe another 10 yards would be a different conversation. Three and out here, Bo, be a pretty big defensive It'll stop by Cedar be Catholic. Very good. A little bit of a chess match. Let's see where they go with this. Wing T formation and Weber down under center. That is Tramp. Tramp gets the call straight forward, and I don't know where he's at. He might be just short. I never did see him after he went into that mix, and he is going to be officially short. I can see the side judge where he's marking it. It's going to be about a half yard short. 
for fourth, a yard. Fourth and about one. And now a big decision for Coach Tom Allen. What are we going to do on the far side of the field? It looks like this is four down territory. He's going for it. Punt team is not out. you got to expect their quarterback, Weber, is going straight forward running here. There it is. Straight yep. forward. He's got one, maybe even two yards. And that'll move the chains. Oof, that's just tough. That is a tough. It doesn't matter who you are or what team you play for. That is a tough play to stop. As it is, that will reset the chains. Just under seven minutes to go. Still only third quarter action. We got a long, rainy night ahead of us here. 16 to 6 your score. As now Weber back under center for Crofton. Quick pitch, straight forward run. He's going to be upended. Outstanding play there. Kirby Hochstein makes the stop. And a flag comes in late. This is, I don't know who's getting the call here, but there's going to be an unsportsman like. Yep. See if, we, see if we get an offsetting here. Yeah, offset. There's one. That is, it's an offsetting. But the thing to remember here is on sportsmanlike conduct, if a player gets two of them, they have to sit. They're ejected from this game, and then if it's in the second half, they got to, they, I think, believe they have to sit at least half the next game. There's a lot, a lot going on out there. Hunter Taney went to pick up the flag, <laughs> and the coaches have to put it back down. Yep. So I think that's another. <laughs> yeah, do not touch yeah. that flag ever. I don't think there was no ill no. representation there, but yeah. uh, he was trying to be nice and give it back to him. Yeah. But yeah, uh, maybe he earned it the first time. <laughs> uh, a couple guys jawing out there as it is second and ten after that long flag exchange. Weber now under center. Handoff is to the second man. Come a holding flag. He's going to come flying in from the back, Judge. And Cedar Catholic is going to stop that one. I believe it's going to be a hold on big number 56. We'll see what the official call is. No. Chop block. I thought he was all over him. Oh, legal. High low. So that will back him up. I believe that's a 10 yard penalty. <laughs> I guess they're doing it every play. Yeah, that's, says. Yep. Get the benefit of with these microphones. We can hear everything they're yelling. And apparently they're doing it more times than they're calling it. As it is, they'll back them up. 10 yards, second down, and you're going to be 10. Uh, 25. 20, yeah, 25. Long ways here. Field position at stake. As Crofton now often sputtering just a little bit after getting that first down. Two wide outs to the far side for Crofton. Weber rolls out to the far side. Now looks back to the a broken busted play. He's gonna he's got a receiver deep in the backfield. He's gonna be blown up in the backfield. Cedar Catholic's bringing down number 14. That's Tramp. A loss of eight on the play. Wow. Yeah, I that must have been a set screen pass. I know 84 was running down the outside seam here wide open but he had eyes for that running back and that's where he was supposed to go and Weber looked down here to the bottom of the field and I th he's like what's he looking at there's nobody down there and finally Tramp came out but Cedar Catholic had Miles Taney and another one there I didn't see yeah. Hunter Taney's right there number 24 also for Cedar Catholic Owen Hymas. Owen Hymas. third and forever now this could really be in Cedars advantageous here to flip this field. And now coming in and Crofton wants to talk things over. We're going to take a 60-second break. We'll be back here in one minute. Stop and Go of Hardington has 24-hour gas and diesel pumps with all of your convenience store needs. From hot, delicious food ready to go in a fully stocked grocery section, and even bait for all the fishermen out there. With fresh roasted chicken served Tuesdays and Thursdays, you'll always find something at Stop and Go. Sedbeck contracting specialties include new residential and commercial construction, kitchen and bathroom remodeling, and additions and upgrades. Sedbeck contracting is bonded, 
insured and registered contractor in Nebraska and South Dakota. Call 402-841-7441 to get started. Third and 31 here for Crofton after that timeout. Cedar Catholic at a prevent defense. And a trap play straightforward running. Tramp's got room. Big play across midfield. A gain of a, about 19 on the play. And that puts it now be fourth and 14. And it looks like punt team's going to come on. Good defensive exchange there for Cedar Catholic. As Crofton also had some miscues and kept going backwards. And now clock rolling just under five minutes to go in the third quarter. Be a smart time to go for a block on this punt. Rugby kick here by Tramp. Gets this one up, rolls end over end. Is going to land at the 20. Just get away from it, and it will go down at the 15. That's where Cedar Catholic will take over first and 10. Top Crop is your local NK Soybean and Golden Harvest corn dealer. Also carrying a full selection of cover crops and offering custom seeding of small grains and grasses. Give Glen Taney a call at 402-841-5599 or just email glenn at topcropinc.com. Top Crop bringing us back here. First down and 10 for Cedar Catholic at their own 15-yard line. 4.36 to go in the third quarter. Two tight ends for Cedar. I formation, one wide out to the far side. And a quick pass over there to Carter Arns. He's going to be pushed down and then some. To four defenders to bring him down. Carter Arns tonight is on. He must have stick him on those gloves. He's catching everything thrown at him almost. I'm not calling it yet, but at the end of the game, we will bring up the Hartoko player of the game. And right now, there's always there's always one person that jumps out. And we might be seeing it in action here. First down and 10. And a nice long, long sequence here would be great for the Cedar offense. Hand off is to Becker, second man through right side. Blocker out front is Hunter Taney. Turns the corner, cross midfield. And Becker's going to step arm his way down to the 40. Easton Becker is starting to turn it on. Just an outside power play there. And he found the hole and got through. Uh, looks like there might be a flag on the field. I just got pointed to two. And yeah, it looks like they're coming back. <laughs> oh. All that work and then one little... Get the official call here from the referee. He says, holding offense. 10-year-old penalty, repeat first down. Yeah, those outside uh, line judges, they uh, normally are getting an earful from the coaches on the side they're on. So <laughs> sometimes that's a either side. Sometimes they just they can throw that flag so they don't have to hear it anymore. So basically that one's going to equate to a what would have been a 30-yard run, and Becker's going to get credit for a half yard. Hand off now. Becker coming left, and pretty good coverage there by Crofton. Gain of a couple will bring up second down. <laughs> second and seven with 3.30 to go in the third quarter. And again, we're on the road the next couple weeks. Oakland Craig, Ponca, and then back here, Norfolk Catholic, they're dropping back down to Class C2 this year. And they've been a C1 powerhouse the past couple of years. Long cadence dragging this out. And blowing that one up in the backfield. Crofton, nowhere to go on nowhere that Nowhere to go. Outstanding play there. I got to get a number. 55 or? 70. He's about the biggest guy out there. Yeah. Uh, Paxton Bartles. Bartles. Yep. Yeah. He looked like Easton Becker just kind of ran right into a wall, and he didn't break through that one. Somewhere his dad, Blake, is down here on the sideline loving that play. Oh, yeah. Two running back, pistol formation here, Cedar Catholic now. Option play, decides to keep it, pass it out. It's going to be caught. Carter Arns, first down, and a gain of another couple past that. Best game I've seen Carter Arns play, yes. period. 
they're incorporating a lot more little short routes and which are just about as effective as a good running back if you can get those short little crossing routes just nickel and dime them down the field I'm watching on the sideline. Are they spraying, like you said, a little stick them or glue on his? I, I don't, don't know. know. He can catch anything. Not when it's this wet. That's that's tough. Pouring rain here. Now hand off to Becker. Stutter steps. Contact in the backfield. Still on his feet. A gain of about five as they had him in the backfield and he got loose. You know, Rick Keen is a guy. I don't want to throw him under the bus, but he left in the group I was talking to at half. Come back a little later and grinning ear to ear. He had this big old umbrella. <laughs> Just, he couldn't take it no more. He goes, I'm getting soaked out here. It's coming down pretty good, and it's it's cold rain, too. That's that's part of it. That's like when you live in Arizona, they say it's a dry heat. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We get a cold rain. Yeah. Second and six. 2.10 to go here in the third we quarter. Gotta, Cedar Catholic got a white out to the near side. And Easton straight forward, sidestep, and he's going to be stopped right at midfield, short of the first down by about two. So a couple of wide receivers coming out. Arns and number 24 for Cedar checking in. That's Owen Hymas. And now Noah Arns will come over here to the near side. Seems like two tight ends, I formation. Cedar's been kind of sticking to this here for the last four or five plays. Easton is going to be short. It'll be about a foot or a yard short, it looks like. Coach, I I trust you, Coach, but I, I think this is a... Uh, you might you might want to go for it here. Yeah, I think so, too. I think do a little misdirection trap play or something to get that. It seems like those linebackers are filling so fast. So if you can get them uh, moved one way or the other, you're set. I formation here, Cedar Catholic. Hard fourth. Count. Oh, he fumbled the ball. Fumbled it, and Crofton is going to take over on downs. Mm -hmm. oh, we talked about how center to quarterback exchange, and there yep. it was. He had a little bit of room there. Some decent block. I don't know if he'd have got it, but... He definitely did not get a clean exchange and lost it right off the get-go. And Crofton will take over. Ball is going to be right at the midfield stripe. I don't know what they're talking about. I think it was pretty cut and dry out there. They were short. And it is so the nose is touching the 50. And Crofton will take over now. First and 10, just under a minute to go here in the third. Hand off to his second man through five yard gain and then some big time. He's got green grass in front of him. He's going to be run down behind. That's number five, Jimmy Allen, making the tackle for Cedar. That was Miles Taney along with Noah Arns, I believe, making the stop. But yep. not after a big gain. Momentum swings. You see us in college ball yep. a lot too. It's like it doesn't take much and it'll swing it. First and 10, I formation as Weber under center. Hands off again to Allen. And number 24, Owen Hymas coming on the blitz on the corner. But not before a gain of about three or four on the play. Yep. If he can spin him down backwards, that would be a little better. But I think he only gained one there. He hit him so far in the backfield. It You know, we get, I think we might have a chance here, Bo, to talk Husker football. Oh, like yes. We're get a chance here. Maybe that game when we play Norfolk Catholic. Uh, i just give you a little preview. I think Husker's going to get beat. They play Ohio State. Oh, yeah. First game of the year. It could happen, but. It could happen. We'll talk more of that fourth quarter. Coming up, 16-6, to six, Cedar Catholic on top. At the Bank of Hardington, we understand the importance of owning your own home. Whether you are buying, building, or refinancing, our real estate loan officers are here to help you through the mortgage loan process. Stop in at Bank of Hardington today to get pre-qualified or go to our website at www.bankofhardington.com to complete an application. Our real estate loan officers, Kristen Denninger and Dana Rosner, are ready to work with you in discovering the best home loan to meet your needs. Thanks. 
Other banks have their branches. We have our roots. Bank of Hardington, tonight's featured sponsor. Thank them for their sponsorship throughout the year, as well as tonight's feature sponsor. Second down and nine coming up here. Fourth quarter just getting underway in a tight 16 to six defensive game so far. Hand off first man through. First down yardage and then some still on his feet and is gonna be brought down. I thought he was plenty good. I might've got a yard ahead of myself there running the ball, number 22. That was Poppy. And then it is first down, so they will move the chains to start this fourth quarter. Yeah, I don't know who laid that last hit down there, but they kind of stopped him dead in his tracks. Just too bad he had already gained seven, eight yards. Ball's at the 20. Yeah, he's now crofting inside the red zone. Hand off to Allen. He's still on his feet. Still on his feet. Got to wrap up, boys. Got to wrap up. And that would be real close to be about a yard short. Give him a gain of eight or nine on the play. See, checking back in for Cedar Catholic number 61, Owen Denner. He's been out for extended time there. Looks like he had an ankle that was giving him a little trouble, and he's still not running 100%, doesn't look like. Weber now under center. Long time dragging this one out. Hand off Allen. There's the first down, and he's still on his feet. Yep. Clock's ticking away. Still a two-possession game, but I'd feel a lot better if there were six or seven minutes on the clock instead of yes. 11. Allen came through that line, and he wasn't touched for the first three yards before he finally found a red jersey. Our coaching staff making a few changes here, offensive and defensively for both squads. And Allen gets a call again, and this time they're going to stand him up. It will be short. He's going to be got down to about the three. And that will be second and goal. Let me get this second down play underway here. Yep, ball's going to be right at the three-yard line. I think we're going to see another dose of some running. High formation here as now Weber, man in motion coming to the near side, handoff to Allen, second man through, and I think he got it. Yeah, and there he it is, just, yep, touchdown. Just got in. He didn't get it by much, but he was real close there. Probably good by about a half a yard. Do we see him go for two here? That might be an option for them. That way it turns it into a field goal wins the game. It looks like they're going for two. Yep, that's interesting call. Quick pitch coming to the near side. Allen tripped up and he's gonna just get across. Mm -hmm. Just got in. Allen on a two point conversion. We're, this game is getting tight. 16-14. Cedar Catholic still on top. And Bob Hymas of Hardington offers excavating, trenching, dozer, and skid loader work. As a licensed electrician, he can also help with all of your demolition and site prep when cleaning off any site. The Dirt Man of Hardington has rig, will dig. Good luck to all teams. Stop in at Broadway Lanes after the game in downtown Hardington. Bring the whole family and enjoy a game of bowling and some great food. Good luck to all area teams from Broadway Lanes. Cedar Security Bank is your hometown friendly bank with locations in Fordyce, Wynot, and Hardington. We strive to meet all of your financial needs. After all, security is our middle name. And for all of your insurance needs, contact Bonnie or Rich at Cedar Security Insurance for a free quote. Good luck to all area teams. Sixteen fourteen, Cedar Catholic on top of Crofton, but the momentum has definitely shifted the Warriors side here. Interesting call, they're going for two, and now a field goal could possibly put Crofton in position to win this game down the, down the stretch. 
Good kickoff. This one's going to be fielded by Arns at about the 18. Across the 25, still on his feet, and it's going to be brought down about the 30. A couple people are signaling like there was a turnover there. I don't know. Now there's referees are going to... I think uh, his forward momentum has stopped, and that's what they're going to call. So the ball was called dead. Well, that's good. Yes, good. <laughs> Very good. Let's watch it on replay. I never saw a ball come out, but you would get tangled up in that mess. You could see a guy that immediately started pointing, and I thought, ah, what's he... No, but as it is, first down and 10, Cedar Catholic. Ball's at the 30-yard line and needing to chew some clock up here. Handoff is to Becker, breaks it out to the near side, and stiff arms the man, turns to turn the corner, across the 45, and shoves a guy. Nice play there. Becker running, shoved out of bounds at the 48-yard line. Good play. He got to the outside and had that one man to get past, and he got past him, and too bad a uh, safety came over and finally got him out of bounds. I like that. Turning the corner there on Slippery Field. Stiff arm a guy. Nice play there by the running back. As it is, first down and 10 at about the 48-yard line of Cedar Catholic. Still two tight ends for Cedar Catholic. One wide out to the far side. Becker's getting the call again. North-south. And gain of a yard. Bring up second down. Hunter Taney came across on a pole and just he hit that D-end and put him on his back. It didn't equate to many f yards for Becker, but he's had a couple ni couple nice runs where he's broke free. Carter Arns splitting out to the far side of the field. He's had stick him on his gloves all night long for Cedar. As it is, I formation here, second down and a long nine. Quick pitch, far side, Hunter's pulling again, turning north-south. Come on, Easton, turn the corner. There you go. Nice running and excellent blocking there. Cedar Catholic, and that will move the chains. Man getting up a little bit slow on the far side. That was Carter Ernstine. No? No, that's Hunter Taney, I believe. Yep. A little bit of a shoulder. like he was... Might have landed on it funny there. He turned the corner. He was one of the pulling guards trying to... Yep, he can move pretty well, and that's the nice part about him. And then he's not afraid to really lay a hit on someone. You know, every first down equates another couple minutes off that clock. Yes. Arns coming to the near side in motion. Quick pitch. Give it to Easton Becker. He's trying to turn the corner. Should be a face mask. No called. And Becker's going to eventually be shrubbed out of bounds. Kirby Hochstein was drugged to the ground there by his face mask. And yeah, no call, and that will bring up second down. And official timeout, number 14 lost his, so he'll have to come off for one play. So they reset the play clock. Call it second and six officially. As now 8 19 to go in this contest. And Cedar, quick pitch to the far side, pulling guard against Hunter. He's going to be tripped up first down yardage. Is they he down? He was, yep, they, the referee signaled that he was down already, so the ground cost fumble. So the ball coming out again, but not before it's down. We'll move the chains again. So about a 35 second play clock. Each play, another minute and a half off. That brings it down six minutes. Yep. A score here, and who that's, I like that position a lot. You get a score, and that really helps your, helps your night out a lot. Puts them in a position where they just got to do things they don't normally do. One wide out to the far. I formation for Cedar Catholic on this first down play. Tate and pulling guards coming this way this time. Becker turns it back north south, stiffs arms a man across the 20 to the 15. Gets a big hit at the 15 and shoved out of bounds at about the 7. Becker cutting it up. He saw his lineman's butts and cut behind him and away he went. Had a little spin move at the end. They couldn't wrap him up. He's doing some nice fancy running now. First and goal for Cedar Catholic as Easton Becker 
We said at the last few games, he seems to get better as the night goes along, and tonight is no exception. I don't know what causes that in a kid. Stubbornness or maybe it's play calling. Coach just gets him warmed up in the first half, but outstanding running here as now we're going to be a signal. And it will be a timeout. So we'll take a 60-second timeout. We'll be right back. Brunel's Food Town is your locally owned Associated Wholesale Grocers grocery store. From grocery, fresh meat, and produce to bakery services and more, we are here for you. Good luck to the Cedar Catholic Trojans and the Hardington Newcastle Wildcats from Brunel's Food Town. At Cedar County Veterinary Services in Hardington, we care for creatures great and small. We offer comprehensive care for livestock and companion animals. Our goal with every visit is to provide an experience that focuses on accurate diagnostics, compassionate treatment of animals, and client education. With our highly skilled staff, we are here to give you a happy and healthy animal. Sixteen, fourteen, seven twenty-six to go. Scott Ark, Bo Benson, and Corey Pearson, the A-Team, bringing you tonight's broadcast. Hartelco, I'd like to thank tonight's feature sponsor, the Bank of Hardington, and all of our sponsors. I appreciate their support. First and goal, ball at the nine. And this has been all Becker here as of late. Pulling to the near side, great blocking. And he's going to be right near there. It's going to be call short. Okay. Gonna... The one, maybe the two-yard line. Can't tell at this angle. So that's uh, three times in a row they've run the same trap play this side, and Becker got down knocking on the door of the goal line, and hopefully he can get her open in this next play and punch her in. Really liking the, the guard play there of Hunter Teeny pulling every single time he's getting out there. Becker can do a lot, but he ain't doing nothing unless he's got blockers in front of him, that's for sure. Maryland eye formation. See if he can't punch this one in here from the one. And there's Becker spinning, still on his feet. Give it the signal. There it is, late touchdown. Cedar Catholic Easton Becker on a two-yard touchdown run. Okay, I can breathe a little easier now. Yeah, that makes it a little easier. So that stretches this lead out now to eight. And this will make it nine if we can get this one in. And that is... That's a two-point, two-score game. Critical. That, critical with only six and a half to go. Arn's on to attempt the extra point for Cedar Catholic. He's been rock solid this season. Kick is up. There it is. Good. Good. Knocks it through. Cedar Catholic extends their lead to nine. They're on top of Crofton with 6.40 to go. They're up 23 to 14. Christensen Well and Irrigation is your professional in the water well industry with over 40 years of experience and knowledge. Christensen Well is also a TL Irrigation Systems dealer and can service and repair all brands of pivots. Call Christensen Well and Irrigation today at 402 254-6809. CL Electric of Coleridge carries a full line of Rinky pivot parts on hand and ready to tune up your pivot. Wheel gearboxes, tower boxes, timers, contactors, end gun stars, and switches. CL Electric is an electrical contractor licensed in both Nebraska and South Dakota. Call 402-283-4220. At Central Valley Ag, your local cooperative, we focus on helping you select the best products and services that will benefit your operation. To learn more, visit cvacoop.com. Central Valley Ag, growing agriculture together. Central Valley Ag brings us back here to Russ Hochstein Field in Hardington. Cedar Catholic extends their lead 23 to 14. Tough matchup here. Number five ranked Cedar Catholic, number 14 ranked. Crofton, as we mentioned, rankings go out the window with these two schools. This one is not over, but definitely some breathing room now as Cedar Catholic gets this one all set. Kickoff, nice kickoff back. Tramp's going to field it at the 15. Owen Hymas is flashing in there. He's got some blockers out front, and he's going to be brought down 
at the 30-yard line and a late flag. I don't know. I don't think that's a Cedar player because they were done and coming back this way, I felt. Late, late flag. We'll it see. might be on a coach. You know, you think maybe a, a face mask or something, but I don't, I just don't know. They're unsportsmanlike on Crofton. I don't know who it is. They didn't, I can't tell here, but. They're not saying. It, it wasn't a repeat offender is my. No. Yeah, this is, I haven't not seen any unsportsmanlikes all year, but it doesn't surprise me with these two schools. It just, yeah, that's just a little bit. It gets really chippy. As it is, that's a 15-yard humongous mistake in a game that you can't afford to give up anything. So that will move the ball back to the 15-yard line. That's long 85 yards to go when you like to run and take your time. And it's a six, you know, six minutes and a two-possession two game. So Cedar Catholic just stay disciplined. Hand off now. Straightforward running here. Yeah, it's going to be Allen. And this is where Crofton's built for this grinded-out, boring offense. They don't have the flashy four wide no. outs. You know, I think I've seen three pass plays. One went for a loss, and the other two were overthrown. Crofton has got one timeout left, so this this clock is going to be a huge problem for Crofton here in short order. Second down and a long four for Crofton on this play. And straightforward running, going to get the first down. It looks like I just, I'm not, I'm not the coach of Crofton, but I don't think they have even those plays in their game. Like, they just don't even have them. No. Because if you did, you would be spreading out now, getting wide receivers, trying to get bigger chunks. Mm-hmm. Because you cannot just, you know, we're obviously going to burn a couple minutes off the clock just by taking a knee. They can't afford to burn that, that kind of time up, so... First down and 10 after that play. Their ball is going to be at the 28-yard line. Handoff is to Allen again. Gain of two. Coach Cotto is saying, you can do this all night long. Yeah. This is perfect. I would, yeah. I'd feel comfortable as a coach in this position. And I don't even know if I'd send any blitzers. Just do your do your job. If they get, hopefully we can hold them to two yards each time. But if they yep. get a first down once, just don't let one bust loose. Yep. I agree with that. Handoff is the first man through. That's the fullback. Oh, that's Poppy, and he, he slipped. It looked like he was. <laughs> it looked like he landed back for his knee. <laughs> Feet were going different directions. Uh, we heard everybody in the next booth over. <laughs> uh -huh. If you couldn't hear, there was a lot of ooh and an ah. <laughs> that's just slippery field. But as we're having fun with it here, just over, just under five minutes, so 4:48. Tick tock, tick tock. We got a third and seven. So this doesn't fit into what Crofton likes to do. They like to be a third and two, third and three, short yardage. Yep. Allen now in motion to the far side. Yeah, Weber now rolling out to the far side. Hunter he has got a big hit on him. Fumble. Cedar Catholic's got it. Allen, Allen Denninger, touchdown, Cedar Catholic. Backside hit by Hunter Taney. He came free off the edge, it looks like. Oh. And knock that ball out. And big old Owen Dudiger. He's going to be having fun tonight reliving that. Owen oh, Dudiger. Wow. <laughs> Owen is a player of the game two weeks ago down in David City and comes through picking up that one. Hunter Taney with a monster hit. He had some nice uh, high kicks there to <laughs> keep from getting pulled down, too. <laughs> Put him in at running back, coach. Wow, what a turn of events. Three minutes ago, this contest was very undecided, and now, <laughs> yes. now we're stretching our legs. As it is, Arn's on to kick the extra point. This one's up. It's going to be blocked. Mm -hmm. That was going to be tipped. It's no good. 4.19 to go. This game's turning into be a lot of fun here. 29 to 14, Cedars on top. Hi, I'm Brett Wiedenfeld, Chief Financial Officer and Ag Lender at the Bank of Hardington and I'm also a Northeast Nebraska pork producer. At the Bank of Hardington, we have the tools and knowledge to help your operation grow. 
We understand the challenges facing our producers and are eager to assist with all the financial needs of your farm. We understand the challenges because our ag lenders have true ag experience. Twenty-nine to fourteen, Cedar Catholic taking a dominant position here after that monstrous hit in the backfield by Hunter Taney on Weber, knocking the ball loose, picked up by number sixty-one, two hundred and thirty-pound Owen Daniger, high stepping into the end zone, and Cedar Catholic sealing this game up pretty tight here late in this contest. Pooch kick going to be landed about the thirty. So live ball. Oh, it's going to come out of bounds. That basically is almost like a... Yep, so it's it stays to Crofton. Sounds since, like an onside kick. Yep, since it was touched, though, if, it, if I think Crofton was going to want to let it go out of bounds and they get it at 35, but yep. our player hustled down. It made him touch it and knock it out of bounds, so that negated that penalty possibility. you got to think that Crofton right now is mentally shell-shocked because, like, the stands are that way. There's a lot of a lot of Cedar fans have packed up and left, but they were excited. But now Crofton, it's it's quiet. It's crickets over here. Yep. You know. Straightforward running, good blocking there. Still on his feet. He's going to be brought down. A host of Cedar Catholic Trojans bringing him down. First one going to get a hold of him, though. The nose tackle, Easton Becker. Yeah, there's a lot of teams you feel like, oh, they can always come back. Crofton's not one. They're not that. They're not built that way. They're not coached that way. No, they're just. It's you're like, gonna. We're we're gonna pound it to pound it until it works. Like even right now, they're not taking. They're not hurrying up. No, they're. This game is all but, but three minutes and forty six seconds from being over. Short of the first down. So it's going to be over pretty quick here at the rate we're going. Uh, we'll give it another minute. Hartelko, player of the game. Bo, you pick one, I'll pick one. We'll do that in here in about a minute. We're not going to compare notes. Every now and then we'll compare and say, uh, you know, what do you think about? No. Just, Bo's going to pick them. I've I got two kids in mind, so hopefully me and him are on the same page. Third and four here for Crofton. Straightforward running, straightforward, and a good hit. Kirby Hochstein comes in from the backside. Full force fourth down. Kirby has the heart of somebody that's about 6'5". Yes, about 220 pounds, too. Well, if he actually was in a, it's kind of like Rudy. I'm not comparing him to Rudy, but yeah. the kid just doesn't play like he's five foot six or whatever he is. He doesn't think of himself as, at that size. Fourth down here for Crofton. They're going for it. And that, I feel like that should be a penalty. I, I don't like that either. It's like when that kid goes to move like that, they're trying to draw him off sides. Yep. We're going to keep it right here. 236. I think it's, I like to wait to the end, but let's call it. Let's do our players of the game. Bo, what is your pick? Well, I got two in mind, but I'll give Obviously, Carter Arns tonight, he has just just about every ball thrown his way he caught. He made some big grabs to get some first downs when they were sorely needed. Had one catch and triple coverage down here on this end of the field, and it was just, he was almost unstoppable tonight. 1,000% agree with that pick. And I got to go with someone that just, I the blocking was phenomenal, and... I could always pick Easton Becker simply because he's going to get the numbers. But Hunter Taney, Hunter Shine tonight on both sides of the ball. They are your two Hartelko players. The game fourth and three here. See if Cedar can't wrap this game up. Hand off. And he's going to be short. Cedar Kelly's going to take over on downs. 
as they corralled up Allen in the backfield and Crofton will turn it over on downs. So, yeah, yeah you're, there it is. Yes, that's that's what was sorely needed. It just felt like Crofton. They kind of knew their their time was up. Yeah. At this point in the game, it didn't. It really did feel like they just gave up. Yep. Or they just didn't have the right schematics to, to come back. But uh, I got to give another shout out again. Carter Arns and Hunter Taney, oh. outstanding play. Yes, I, I agree with the the Hunter Taney. He that hit caused the fumble. That that was big in its own right. When he was doing a lot of that pulling around the corner and freeing up for for Becker to, to run and yes. just get that yardage, that's the best I've seen him block all year. Look at this workhorse going. Another first down. Oh, yeah. Well, and that's, yeah, Becker got all those yards, but it was behind Hunter, and yep. Hunter was putting his body on the line. He got up slow a couple times, but he was out here just, he's hurting himself so Easton can get down the field. Yep. Going to be officially marked just a little bit short of that first down marker. Two minutes to go now. And Crofton fans have been asleep for the last 10 minutes, just stunned at what has transpired here. Maryland I formation. You got Kirby. Becker's the back one. I don't know who the middle one is. Uh, is it James Christensen? Yep. Yep. That's yeah, just quarterback, keeper, first down. Should be two more plays. Oh, Hardington Newcastle played last night. Yes, they did. They went down to Lutheran High in Norfolk to play them. And uh, kind of watched, I watched the scores during the game. They had a great start. They led the game for a little bit, and uh, about two and a half minutes left in the half, they were down by two points, but they just couldn't hang on to that momentum. Yeah, Coach Darren Suckstorf is a, just a fantastic coach down there at, at the Eagles in Lutheran High Northeast. They had a lot of runs into the playoffs there in Class C2, and now they're in the D1 ball. And uh, as Taney takes the knee here with a minute 10 to go. So that's a tough matchup there at Luth and I Northeast. And, again, they dropped down to D1 this year, so tough matchup for the Wildcats. I'm assuming they're back home next week because Cedar Catholic's on the road. Yes, I believe, or they might be on the road. Uh, Elkhorn Valley, I think, is who they have next week. I do not know where they And, is. well, let's look right behind us here. October, yes, they, they are home. So October 9th, 7 p.m. against Elkhorn Valley. So they're home, and Cedar Catholic will be on the road against Oakland Craig. And I believe we'll be bringing that game broadcast to you on 94.3, the current, next week. We'll get some information out to everyone. Uh, I'll be announcing that game with Scott Kustra. You can log in live online and watch that. And again, outstanding victory here. The score is not really reflective of this game. No. This was a hard-fought, close game until that one defensive touchdown, and that's just a couple little miscues by Crofton helped get those two extra scores to win the game. Final seconds ticking away here. Everybody's they're already praying on the far side or having their meeting and the clock ain't even at zero, but there is official signal end of the game. And the referees are out there meeting with Coach. I don't know what it's about, but as it is, this game is going to go final here. So Cedar Catholic walks away with an outstanding victory against number 14th ranked Crofton. The battle for the war for the oar. Cedar Catholic retains the oar, I think, for the fourth year in a row. And they come away with a well-earned, tough victory here tonight. 29-14, your score. Corey Pearson alongside Bo Benson. Scott Ulrich bringing you tonight's broadcast. Thank you for tuning in. Next week, we'll be back here. Hartelko bringing you... Hardington Newcastle Wildcat football. And we won't be back here until we bring you Norfolk Catholic on October 23rd. See you back here in two weeks. Thank you.